So in my presentation today, I want to talk about women and girls in the chess war, some story and inspiring stories, and as well as achievement in, in the sport and education. And I want to put a little touch on my personal experience, how I combine chess and professional career. I would like to start my meeting, um, my presentation with two very nice videos that you all can find in YouTube. Uh, they were done by the uh, Corporation of the United States Chess Federation, and it's about testimony of a scholastic chess player, what it means chess for them. I would start with Chess is a thinking game. Chess is a game of skill. Even though it looks boring, doesn't mean it is boring. It is a great game. It's my favorite game also. You have materials, pieces, 16 pieces on both sides. Your pawns move one up or two up, but it captures differently than it moves. A knight moves like an L. A rook can move sideways and forward, that's all. The bishop moves diagonal. Wait, we didn't mention the king and queen. Anyway, anyway. The queen is very powerful, and if you take the queen, it will be easy for you to checkmate. The best way to learn chess is to learn a lot of openings. It's also good to learn tactics. That helps you be a bit more yeah. solid player. Because I haven't learned all the strategies yet, but I have learned some. My favorite opening is probably the English attack. I played a Sicilian. One of our favorite openings is Sicilian, Sicilian and we learned it in December. I like the fried liver. E6, no E5. E6, E5, what up? The Scotch Gambit. It's very hard to win. It's not C3, it's a D4 no, and then C6 and then no, C3. C3. People who play the London system usually win, but it's really complicated. D4 but takes yeah, takes two. Really because C4 is a pawn. Fried liver is disgusting. You need bravery to play chess. I was a little scared to play at first. When I get nervous, I like to wiggle my toes. Breathe and then hold the air for three seconds. You play calmly, and if you lose, you're not going to be scared or sad. I'm not that upset. I'm just kind of upset. I'm not super upset. I'm just upset. When you lose, you learn from your mistakes. Yeah, don't, like, give up. It's not like you're going to play bad for the rest of your life. Sometimes he cries when he loses. That was a little baby. And you cried last time. You didn't want to play anymore <laughs> because you were tired of me beating you. <laughs> Is that correct? Probably. He thinks if he loses, you should give up chess. Yes. You, you can still play and you will still improve. If you win again, you should be good sportsman. If we win, we'll be happy, but, but do not love it in your face. You know how your parents are proud of you when you win? You could also be proud of yourself. I'm not really trying to be too competitive. I'm just trying to show myself that I can do this. And I agree with Charlotte. A hundred percent. It doesn't matter how old you are, how small you are. Just a game like for everybody. Adults who don't know how to play chess shouldn't be scared. Old people shouldn't be forced to learn chess, but if they want to learn chess, surely they can. They're allowed to. Even though they could be doing something else, like playing Legos, it's not always about to win trophies. It's about having fun. If you have fun, you will learn more of it. So I think you should ask me, why do you like chess so much? It's just a game of concentration. And that concentration will help me everything I do. I think chess has taught me brain skills to help me with other things in my life. I learned how to be aggressive. Be more famous if you play well. So it teaches you how to make a plan and making mistakes or blunders. All you have to do is try again as fast as you can. Chess is very fun, 
So I'll never stop playing. When I win, it, it gives me a good feeling, like I'm good at chess and I learn every day. Chess is not a boring game. It's like magic. And it's actually really fun, in my opinion. <laughs> The second video is more focused on the testimony of girls in chess. To be a good chess player, you need to have confidence and faith in yourself that you can win a game or so. Not being a sore loser and just be smart. A girl that likes to play chess is open to possibilities. She's motivated, has to want to fight. All players, you may start White's Clock. You can't be one of the squirmy kids. You have to actually focus. Not be scared or afraid of what's gonna happen. If there's one thing every girl needs to have, it's determination, and if something goes wrong, they don't give up. I think chess is gonna benefit me later in life because you become more aware. Chess is like life to me. I came a long way. First, I was anxious. I didn't really know how to move the pieces or whatever. I think chess is amazing. Like, it's, it gives you a second chance. In my grade, I'm the only girl that plays chess, so. I only know about like two or three girls, including myself, and about like 50 boys. A lot of girls are intimidated because they're not playing against the same gender. More boys play chess than girls because the really good grandmasters were like boys, so they may be like nervous and then they already feel like they lost. It's funny because I usually play boys, but every single time I get really nervous for some reason. I think girls are, are very intimidated by the number of boys. I, I am sometimes. They're like whispering, oh look, I'm gonna beat her. But then when I beat them, they look totally crushed and they're like, how could I lose? How could I lose to a girl? It would just show me how he didn't really have much respect for his opponent. To get girls into chess, we can send a message showing them that girls are equal. If I'm the only one, I'm like, hey, where did all the girls go? And now I'm at this huge girls' nationals. It's a unisex game. It's not only for one gender, you know what I mean? There's no whispering that you're gonna lose because you're a girl, because we're all girls. I actually get to play girls that I didn't even know, and I get to make new friends with them. <laughs> Other girls at my school definitely look up to me because I play something that's unique or different than what usually girls play. When I win, it's like, wow, I got this right in the bag. You're surrounded by, I don't know how many girls are here, but you know that you're not alone. Or you know that there's way more than just you. Okay, coming back to my presentation. Those are very, very nice videos and it's very touching uh, to see the future generation, how they think about a complex game of chess. Um, talking about history, uh, between the 14th and 18th century, chess was a social pastime for both men and women of the upper class in Europe. Among them, Mary Queen of Scott, Queen Elizabeth I, and the Duchess of Bourbon, Bathilde Orleans, was also a strong player and often played Benjamin Franklin. Thomas Jefferson has written about their matches in their books. In the 19th century, men dominated the chess world completely, 
And among of those famous players from that time, we can mention Paul Morphy, Tarash, Emmanuel Lasker, Steinitz. And really in that century, there wasn't any predominant woman chess player that could compete at the same level than, than men. Only until the 20th century, the, the female players made more significant progress and they break the male dominance in the game. The most uh, notorious one was Vera Menchi, who could compete successfully at the highest level. She was also the first woman world champion. In 1978, Nona Gaprin Dashvili from the country of Georgia was the first fem female awarded the title of international grandmaster. In 2000, Judy Polgar from Hungary becomes the top woman player, also a grandmaster, and Georgian and European female players are recognized as well in the overall male and female competition. From 2010 to current time, Ho Ji Fan from China leads the female player ranking list. She's the only woman currently ranked in the top 100 overall chess player, followed by the current woman world champion from China as well, Yu Wenjun, ranked 285 on overall on the overall world ranking as of 2019. There are currently 37 female players who hold the title of Grandmaster. And as November 2019, the FIDE database list showed 116 living women uh, who hold the international master title. Just uh, to make a note here, there are difference in title as woman's title and absolute title, being the absolute title a little bit more um, harder to get because the, the, the rank, ranking list or the ranking and norms that you need to complete in order to get it are um, normally harder than the woman's side. However, those females that are in this list are successfully competing in the highest level among men and female, uh, men and women. Uh, I wanted to share some of the research and publication because um, chess has been subject to many um, to many research because all the benefits that can provide to the to the human brain. Bilali in 2009 um, said the higher strength of top male chess players is attributed mostly to participation rate and male predominance at the top. Same author said that it's very interesting that a visual research of the different in pattern recognition, which is the which is look like the key strength factor among the chess master between the chess expert and novice, female chess player were not included in the research group. Other variables attributes are memorization and psychological factors that lead different strategic decision making between the two genders. This, um, this is a, a very interesting line of investigation uh, research here and it wants to create a homogeneous test for each of these variables to present a clear visualization of the specific strength of both gender. The choice to only look at male chess players leaves a wide research gap open to explore. In order to increase participation rates among female chess players, Chess education needs to be tailored to their specific needs, like in many sports and disciplines. Measuring the difference in the above mentioned variables between the two genders will lead to a significant insight into gender difference in perception of the game of chess, which can be used to improve training approach and raise the participation rate among females. In a, in a psychological game like chess, it is of importance to research this difference. The insights will furthermore lead to evidence for further MRI studies into generalizing gender brain difference in decision making, which at the moment there are some research in progress, but with mixed group of male and female. And I will share um, 
for that activity. This is the picture of the brain and many of the latest research have found that the morphological changes that they have found in gray and white matter uh, between control groups and expert chess player have been on the frontal and parietal lobe, but very specifically in the occipital, occipital temporal junction. They have found that the change, the morphological changes, has um, have been variable according to the strength of that chess player and the amount of years that that chess player has been practicing the game of chess. Thinking the way that chess player thinks can modify in a significant way your brain structure. Games like chess promote the growth of dendrites, which are the bodies that send out signals from the brain's neuron cells. So with more than drives, the neuro, neural communication improve and become faster. So in many tests, when you present chess players and control group, and they identify just simple geometrical shapes, um, there is no difference in, in both groups. Uh, as far as response in recognizing, recognizing those patterns. But if you put the same position or chess question to both groups, you will find out that the activity in the brain in those areas are more um, pre predominant in the chess players. Activities uh, like a STEM or any other challenging activity and interaction with people can also promote the growth of dendrites. This is a, another study in which um, the expert uh, found the morphological um, uh, changes in the part of the brain and specifically in comparing to the uh, nucleus and uh, the voxel base of the uh, occipital temporal junction. Now, um, this, um, this article, I'm uh, just gonna leave uh, in, your, um, in the presentation so you can read the whole, um, the whole uh, step that the, the researchers took in order to conclude with the, uh, with the, with the conclusion that uh, the long-term chest training and practice uh, can um, positively uh, uh, change uh, the brain's pattern. And they also use um, the uh, MRIs, um, x-rays. Okay, here are two links of um, websites that uh, show the, um, the initiative of the United States Chess Federation led by the uh, Women's National Director, Jennifer, Women's Grandmaster Jennifer Shahade. And in this website, um, she, um, she has um, put together a lot of uh, great females, um, volunteer parents, uh, uh, players around the United States that have been coming up to the girls' room that the United States Chess Federation set up in multiple national and local tournaments. And and it's very interesting because we also handle town hall meetings and then we listen what what kind of problems or what kind of um, uh, opportunities those girls have either in their school, either in their chess club or either in their community. Uh, this is a, a grandmaster Nasi Pakitsa, uh, that's uh, 2018, 2018. Uh, 18 well, women's uh, U.S. champion, and and then also in this link, you are going to see a website that it will tell you uh, what tournaments and events are related to women's and girls in chess around the United States. So everybody's welcome to send um, emails to uh, the United States Chess Federation and they will share with uh, as many girls and, and female who, who, who likes to be involved 
how to promote the participation of girls and women in chess. Okay, let's see. Okay, so I want to talk about some of the inspiring stories. And uh, I'm going to start with Hoji Fan because when she, when she became grandmaster at 14 years, it was something that the chess player got very impressed. Um, she learned how to play chess when she was five years old. And at 16, she, she, she became already the best female world champion. She became grandmaster, like female Samboy at 14. And then at 16, she already was topping the top rank on the female rank. Um, and then uh, among her winnings was uh, the world chess champion. And she also defended on 2011 and won it again in 2013 and 2016. While Ho is currently the highest ranking female player by nearly 100 points, she lost the title of woman world champion when she chose not to compete in the women's tournament in 2016. This was a conscious decision to protest the difference between the open and women's world championship system. While the world champion gets to defend his title against an official challenger, the incumbent female champion can get knockout without even playing the new champion. She is pursuing her master degree in science and education at the University of Oxford since 2018. Here we have four iconic chess players and each of them have a very, very long list of, of great performance and personal experience. I just want to talk a little bit about each of them. I'm going to start with the top list, which is Vera Menchik. As I mentioned before, she was the first woman world champion. Although unfortunately, she passed away tragically very young on 1944. But uh, she was actually the one who break up the male dominance in, in, the, in the 20th century. And she defended her world championship six times in her career. Uh, she was inducted to the uh, uh, World Chess Hall of Fame uh, in 2011. And then we have here uh, a living legend, she's 79 years old now, um, Grandmaster Nona Gaprich, that's Billy from Georgia. And she, she was a uh, multiple time gold medalist in the, Olymp in the Chess Olympiads uh, for the country of Georgia. She was awarded the the highest award by the World Chess Federation of Kaisa, being a pioneer in the Grandmaster Chess level. Uh, we have here also a living le legend, although retired very young already, Judy Polgar, and she she became the top female player after Nona for 20 years, and she was also. Um, uh, recognized because she broke the uh, Bobby Fischer records and she's now promoting chess uh, in her country, Hungary, with uh, her foundation. And she also enjoys to, to write chess book uh, for, for kids to inspire them. And her sister, Sophia, which is also a grandmaster, um, illustrate those uh, books. And her other sister, Susan, is also a, a grandmaster. Award, and a world champion. And we have here uh, in the top bottom, uh, Yu Wen Yu, which is our current women's world champion. She defended her title again this year, this year and he won in January. And uh, she has a very, very bright future. And um, among the, the recent um, uh, triumph is uh, that she became a world champion, gold medalist, individual at the Olympics, and then uh, the team uh, from China also got the gold medals in the in the past Olympiad. Here are a lot of pictures. I just want to um, uh, narrate a little bit uh, them. As I mentioned, that every time that we have a national event, and since the United States Chess Federation um, had the initiative to promote the girl participation. Uh, we have the girls club and many of the previous champions 
and uh, have been uh, coming to the, the room and give some um, lessons and, and also review some game for the uh, participants here. And here we have um, uh, Grandmaster Jennifer Shahari. In the middle is our current US woman champion, Jennifer Yu. She um, also got accepted in the Harvard University to continue her college. And uh, she was also helping us in the um, National Elementary last uh, December in Orlando. And we also have here um, Grandmaster, Women's Grandmaster Nancy Pakixi and Women's Grandmaster Sabina Poisor. Chess is a family tradition for me. Um, I learned how to play chess as well at the age of five. Uh, my parents uh, introduced me and my brother. My brother is also international master and neurosurgeon. He currently lives in Spain. He has a beautiful family and he, he wants to also teach chess for his children. And you know, in, in, we share our lives together at home. We travel to many countries together. We learn how to keep an organized schedule to a school and to chess since very, very young age. And when we play actually in real competition, we have to fight. We didn't tie the game because we were brother and sister. We actually learn how to compete against each other. Um, also my parents, uh, occasionally when, when we meet, uh, we also play casual chess to remember all those great experience that just practicing chess um, brought us as a family and all the experience is something um, without any value. Um, okay, my personal experience in my career. Uh, these are some um, newspapers cuts from the time. Some of them are as far as 25 years ago, but many times when I was uh, doing my uh, career in dentistry in Venezuela, my, uh, my classmates and my teachers said, how do you do it? You, you went to a tournament, you, you missed classes 16 days, and then you came here, you did the test, you, go, you complete the um, works. Um, how do you do it? I, I thought that many of the sport players has to quit the, the studies in order to become good in, in one thing and then not do other things. And actually, I proved through my career that that's not, that's not right. And in many of my interview, I share, um, I share my experience that in order to become good, you have to be very disciplined, you have to be highly motivated. And you can program yourself, you know, ahead. Usually when I was competing, I tried to program the year before all the competitions that I will be attending during a year and also was reviewing all my um, uh, assignments from the school and I could, you know, complete uh, with the efficient both of them. I also got awarded the national order from the president of Venezuela 25 years ago for my chess achievement and in in the in the worship in the United in the Venezuelan Chess Federation also got the athlete of the year when I was 12 years in in multiple categories including the master category here okay so as resuming a little bit uh, how you can achieve um, good efficient in both so you have to be highly motivated whatever career or whatever activity you want to do you have to be highly motivated you don't need to wait for somebody to motivate yourself um, you have to learn how to keep an organized schedule i learned how to do it from my primary school years because one of the things that my parents um, talk at is like if you have a good grade you can have a good time to 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 go to your tournament and you can have more choices whenever you go to the college or university so for us it was very important to keep a high grade like gpa three and above so we can complete the school requirement before or after any chess competition and when we were having good results of course we catch attention of school and organizations and the recognition were of course scholarships and and then awards and that was something that it was uh, 
helpful for our motivation. And of course, we got um, the sponsorship from either the federation or companies that were willing to, you know, to, to help in order to participate in, in different tournaments. This is a little bit of what I do in Atlanta. I have a company that I teach after school programs in, in several private schools here in Georgia. And I have a diverse group in each school. Some school I have more girls than boys. Some other I have mixed boys and girls. And in some I have just like all boys and maybe one or two girls. But the common, the common thing here is that uh, they are there because they love it. Nobody's forcing them. And they, they like to, they learn by the mistake. They feel sad, they rebound, they, and they learn all that. And, and they're happy. And actually parents have a great feedback from parents of all the benefits that they are seeing in their kids when they attend to chess class. Because they, 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 they share with me that they, I cannot believe how quickly they do their homework because they wanted to have some time to play chess either with the computer or read a book. And, and that's something that is very gratifying for me. And also, um, you know, uh, I, when I do, when I, when I teach chess, I also tell them that if they don't want it just to play or compete, there are other forms that they can be involved. Like it, it's just solving puzzles or trying other chess variants. So here is me doing a chess timer in which um, I'm playing 10 to 15 girls at the same time. And I also teach that to my students. So if you see your coach doing that, you can do it too. You just need to train. In this picture is uh, one of the many town hall meeting that we have been doing with the United States Chess Federation. And, and, and other guest participants. And, you know, we have a great uh, review for, from parents and, and players. About chess and emotional intelligence. Um, when you are in a, when you are analyzing a chess uh, game or a chess position, you, you learn how to discriminate uh, among different moves. And then when you choose three or four things, and then you review the path to either complete a combination or, or to complete a chess tactic, that generate emotions in you. So when you do that often and often, and that kind of emotional intelligence you apply to the real life, is something that you learn from the game of chess. And also, when you are more uh, emotional intelligent, you are more pers um, you perceive, you perceive that kind of emotion from other people. And then you can say, you can actually in, intuit, intuit what the other people are feeling. Is they are insecure, is they are nervous, and then you can take that toward to your advantage, okay? And I think that when you learn how to regulate, regulate um, you become more emotionally intelligent, that promotes personal growth. This is a um, structure of how could be a nice training schedule and organization when you want to have a goal, either you wanted to raise certain amount of points in, in chess, or you just wanted to become a state champion, or you just want to become a title player. You have to have a schedule. And this is something that I put in my, in my most advanced student or for those students who want to accomplish that, I said they have to have a steady time available, either five, 10 hours a week or more as to completing all other, um, um, all other uh, school uh, requirements. Also has to have some type of resources like chess book, magazine, database. And nowadays the computers and internet is a very, very great tool. Um, also, the, it's important to have a coach, at least in the beginning, to guide you how you can study more certain subjects of the game. And it's very important to have some um, tournament participation. And even though for many people can be limited because the lack of sportsmanship or the distance um, is something that every chess player should um, try the best to do it. 
in order to prove their progress. Um, with that training plan, it comes goals. And then, of course, when you execute your plan, you have to evaluate your result. If everything was as planned, great. If not, then you have to review the mistake and then correct it to do it better next time. These are some of the websites that I, I usually check and uh, I use myself and it's very popular in internet. Uh, um, and then everybody can access to those to either play casually, play online tournaments or uh, review nice articles and information about current information of the chess world. Um, my most um, recommended books nowadays is that the Journey of the Chess Kingdom by Yuri Aberbach and my help Berlin because it shows a very nice story of the chess game, but actually very instructional. And that's, uh, that's a good way to remember some um, basic principles. Of course, there are other books that I also recommend to my students. And I also like to read biographical books like Judith Polgar and how she narrates um, her own experience when she beat when she beat the beat, uh, Bobby Fischer record uh, to become a grandmaster. This year, I was planning to do a Olga summer camp here in Atlanta. Unfortunately, it has to be rescheduled for next year due to the pandemic. And when I do the chess camp in my mixed group, I always like to um, encourage them in. In, in become the best. It's not like you're just playing one game to win or lose. It's just learn from the whole experience. And and I like the interaction that they, they, they have during those um, camps um, and tournaments that I prepare for them. As a conclusion, um, I would like to say that only one woman in the world's top 100, which is Hoji Fan, is is what we have. And that's very um, little percentage, but we have seven in the top 500. Just 16% of US Chess Federation members are female from youth competition and up. And that might seem low, but it was a record high just recently last year. And that's only United States. I think worldwide we're less than 16% of the female and woman participation in chess because all depend of the opportunities and the promotion that every country and federation have. Um, but with women's world championship, women's state, national and continental tournaments used to qualify, there is a room for female players to cultivate the game on their own terms and enjoy being part of the elite in the national and international chess environment. Female that have include chess as part of their curriculum have succeed in other professional careers applying the benefits of critical thinking and emotional intelligence learned through through playing the game and a nice thought i found by um, the unfortunately lost kobe bryant uh, it was very touching to me because he he's a, le a basketball legend, a successful business owner, a husband, a dad, and he has girls. He's, he, he wanted to teach that to his girls that if they like anything, they can reach it uh, with uh, hard work and perseverance. So he, he well said this phrase here, love what you do, work hard, and your perseverance will pay off. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Blanco. Uh, we have some time to uh, answer some questions. Uh, we have one question that's very interesting. Uh, the question is, uh, Gary uh, Kasparov said, uh, weak, weak human plus machine plus, uh, weak human plus computer plus better process is actually better than the computer alone. Uh, so uh, what is your inside opinion in terms of uh, how humans and uh, AI can work together in chess and in problem solving? 
It's, yeah, it's, so uh, that's true that many things and, you know, the few gains that computer has lost against human is basically because the computers don't have the intuition. Uh, however, um, that was said by Gary Kasper a few years ago. Nowadays, we have a very, very strong computer of a zero, like I uh, don't think anybody has beat it yet. And the, woman, uh, the computer have, are becoming stronger and stronger. But yeah, so um, I think we're going to be at the point that a computer is going to teach us more than we teach them. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we can work together for our own benefit. Uh, I heard the story that uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen used Alpha Zero, uh, actually learned plays uh, the move some of, from Alpha Zero to improve his uh, own game, right? Uh, so have you looked into uh, Alpha Zero's games and uh, do you think uh, uh, it's possible to learn from the computer engine? Yes, uh, although, you know, when you see Sonos again, the Alpha Zero has um, won, some of the moves that uh, you find as a chess player are outrageous, you know, because when you learn chess, you learn principles and the computers don't play by principle because they just calculate 20, 100 moves ahead. And um, you, you know it as a chess player because you study the position. But um, in general, when you wanted to improve chess, you imitate other chess players that you admire. Like, for example, if I like to learn Queen's openings or, or, or Sicilian opening, I will pick up the grandmaster or the players that I know that they play that kind of game, and I will review it, and I will try to imitate it. So for Alpha Zero being the strongest computers in the world, is you review their games and you try to use one of those moves in your games, of course, you're going to learn from that idea. Great, great, thanks. So I have another question. Uh, are you familiar with the research about applying the lessons of chess pattern recognition to mass or physics problem solving? I don't do it myself because I know that well of math, but I know very good chess player and math teacher that are doing it. And I completely agree with that because, uh, you know, the chess board has 64 square. Um, I know that some of my primary students can use it to learn the math table. And actually for algebra, it's very good too. Uh, and I think uh, that's a good um, association to use the pattern recognition of chess position with math formulas or, or problem solving. Great. Uh, so I know you have participated in and organized many uh, activities, uh, events for uh, uh, chess for girls, uh, you know, for example, at the National Elementary, you have the girls club, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, how do you encourage, uh, what, what, do, what do you think we should do to encourage more girls to play chess? Apparently, uh, so if we look at, uh, everywhere in the US, we see um, more boys than girls play chess. So anything we can do to address the problem? Yeah, so the main thing is like uh, many of the girls and women, they, they don't get motivated because they either lose too much or there is no any uh, room for them to to win a prize when there are too many uh, boys or, or, or men in the competition. But uh, they have to think a little bit more wide that even if they don't win in the tournament or they don't win in the in the competition, they, they can learn from that. And actually just the, the fact to get challenged and, uh, and, and get better is, is a, a motivation enough for them to, to try the game of chess. And as I said, there are so many things that they can do if they don't want it to compete. There are so many books, interesting books, and so many puzzle exercises that they can do on a regular basis. And that kind of, um, that kind of exercise, it, it, it helps them with the uh, cognitive um, uh, growth. Okay, now, do you play any other games? What's your next favorite game, assuming chess is a favorite? Uh, I used to play um, with my brother, um, Cars, uh, but uh, 
like honestly um right now uh my hobby besides chess will be more like an art and um and i just like to read interesting things i i do follow a lot of chess um tournaments even though i don't play actively that much the main thing i don't play active actively is because um tournaments take a lot of time there's not like a one weekend it's usually two weeks and and then being a business owner i cannot do that uh <laughs> that much but i do follow a lot and as well uh my career in orthodontics here in the United States uh, I have been um, more involved in the entrepreneurial part of the orthodontist, practicing as a certified extended duties assistant to my colleagues to keep my clinical skill. But uh, I, I am multitasking and I follow many of the orthodontist world and, um, you know, technology and also in the chess world. Okay, great. Uh, so I have one more question. Uh, you switched your career from uh, chess to medicine. And uh, was your experience in chess useful for your transition? Uh, and uh, can you give us, if it was, then can you give us some example, like how to help? <laughs> well, I never switched. I actually think I became chess player first than dentist. And then somehow, because I live, you know, I have to move from different countries. Somehow here I'm more involved with the chess, but uh, I actually, you know, I learned chess when I was five. So I don't remember any time that I quit completely chess or I complete, completely dentistry because of that. Um, you know, my brother, Cristobal, he's an acting neurosurgeon and he actually has uh, her rating uh, very high, like 300 points over me. And he play when he has time, you know, during the weekends on internet. And if you love it, you don't need to quit completely. Uh, chess, as I said, because I combine it in my career, helped me to to be more um, more integral, more fast thinking and critical thinking. Uh, I, it helped me a lot. And besides all the experience of all the countries and people that I met around the world, I don't think I could do that just being a dentist. So chess is very important in my life. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so we have another question. Uh, how did you decide to play chess professionally? And also what advice do you have for girls who want to start playing chess? Well, I think because my brother and I were very close and he's only one year younger, we, we had that challenge from home you know like if he wants to be champion i will be champion and one of the motivation when we were children was in order to travel outside of venezuela because if you become a state champion then you could go to the national champion if you become national champion then you can represent your country in pan american world youth and olympics and we did it the first year we love it and that we aim it to do every year so we can meet different countries. And, you know, back of the time, back in the time, like 30 years ago, that was a motivation enough for us. But I understand that nowadays with so many distractions with so many choices, it's hard for girls to choose um, how to become professional in a sport and not having a career. And I would say for those girls who are debating, like, is, is your coach or is you feel that you have the, uh, the talents to do it, you can pause um, either other activities and focus in one that you think that you have the most talent. But at the same time, you need to think ahead. So you need to think, okay, what I will do if I'm not completely a professional player or a professional athlete? Can I work in another field? So you have to constantly review what is more convenient for your life. Okay, let me see. I think that's all the questions we have. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Blanco. We appreciate your time. And uh, thanks for all the participants. Uh, Suzanne, Eric, do you guys have other comments? Uh, we just want to thank you very much on behalf of Nimbus. We appreciate your talk and uh, really enjoyed it and also enjoyed the questions and your answers. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Professor Chapman.
Yeah, thanks for organizing, uh, Eric. Thank you very much for putting everything together. Okay, so we wish everyone has a good evening. And, you might uh, mention the date of the next one. Yes. Oh yeah, the, sorry about that. <laughs> I made a mistake. The next uh, webinar will be uh, on August the 20th, uh, August 20th, not, yes, two weeks later. Same date, uh, same time. Uh, we'll send out an email for with details. And next week it's going to be an, an engineer you want to mention. Next time as an engineer you mentioned that one. Uh, yes. So the speaker for the next webinar will be uh, Professor uh, Oslam Klich. Uh, she is the Associate Dean uh, at the College of Engineering at UT. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. See you next time. Thank you.